Robert Miller was a controversial figure in the history of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Some called him a thief, others an escaped convict, but everyone knew him as old 12% after the interest rate he charged on loans made in Jackson. Born in 1863 in Argyle, Wisconsin, Robert Miller moved to Jackson in 1885. His life before that time is the stuff of legend, though some have speculated that he was on the run from the law when he arrived in Jackson. These theories were only encouraged by Robert's friendship with the known horse thief Teton Jackson when the two met on a visit to the area. The following year after returning to the valley, Robert discovered that Teton Jackson had been incarcerated in Bighorn, Wyoming for horse thieving. Miller took over Jackson's land on what is now the National Elk Refuge. Locals assumed he was up to something shady and nicknamed his one-room, dirt-floored cabin the Outlaw Place. In 1889, he made his first loan, a winter's worth of hay to the Cheney and Wilson families who had just come over Teton Pass. On a return trip to the East in 1893, he married Grace Green of Ottawa, Illinois. They returned to Jackson in 1895 and started construction on the two-story log home known as Jackson's first trophy home. It was used by the ranchers and homesteaders as a meeting place and center of social activity. The Millers grew quickly in their finances and soon operated the largest cattle ranch in the valley. Robert also made personal loans and served as constable. A shrewd money man, he slowly took ownership of land all over the valley when ranchers failed to pay on their loans. In 1914, they sold the house and surrounding property to the National Elk Refuge and moved into town. Their house still stands at the corner of Brune and Broadway. Robert and his prosperous neighbors formed the Jackson State Bank by contributing shares of $100 each. Miller was named president, a role he held until his death. In 1926, the Snake River Land Company hired him as purchasing agent to buy up property around the Tetons. Miller later claimed that he was not aware that it was John D. Rockefeller who was secretly snatching up land to donate to the U.S. government for what would become the Grand Teton National Park. When the residents of Jackson found out that Rockefeller was behind it, they were angry that Miller didn't pay them more money for their land. By the time the Snake River Land Company came buying, Robert already owned $88,000 in mortgages slated to be purchased by the government, or about $1.15 million in today's money. Interestingly, Miller, who helped buy much of the land and grew even wealthier through its sale, was against the founding of the National Park. In 1920, Grace was elected mayor of Jackson, the leader of the all-women town council known as the Petticoat Rulers. During her term, the city park was beautified, streets improved, and a title was secured for the city cemetery. In 1965, the trophy home was falling apart, slated to be burned down by the fire department. But the Jackson Hole Historical Society and Museum stepped in and the building was nominated to the National Register of Historic Places in 1969. In addition to photographs, many items still exist from the Millers, including coat buttons from Robert's Forest Service jacket, Grace's coat, and even their homesteading papers. Was Robert Miller an outlaw, a swindler, or just an average citizen with a knack for money? We may never know, but the Butte, Park, and Houses named for the Millers demonstrate that they had a lasting impact on the community.